Hey everyone, it's Mike Gardner again. I'm just unloading my car from the uh, first time attack event of the year, uh, CSCS time attack event. I figured I'd take out my phone and uh, post a vlog style recap of the event. I left my keys in the trailer all week. That was intelligent. There she is, fresh off her first event win in the unlimited class. So yep, in short, the event went great. We ran the uh, most sport DDT in 131.616, which was good for first place in unlimited rear wheel drive. It was good for third fastest overall at the event out of over 70 cars. It was the fourth fastest time ever run on the track. It was about two seconds off the class record set by at Mile to Wild Racing in Strati. So recap point one, the decision to run unlimited rear wheel drive. Uh, at first it might not make a lot of sense or it might not seem to make a lot of sense, but I'm basically running it because it's the cheapest option for me this year. To run unlimited rear wheel drive, I didn't have to buy any equipment. I didn't have to do anything. Uh, everything was already set up. I didn't need any new parts. If I had run in Ontario Time Attack and if I wanted to make sure I was uh, extra competitive, I would have had to have bought uh, new street tires. I would have had to have bought a new rear bumper, a new harness. Running the Super Street class with CSCS, I would have needed the Pirelli Trofeo Rs. Unlimited, I needed nothing. That seemed to be the place to go. Uh, on top of that, should I get really lucky, like I did this time, I can manage to win an event, I can take advantage of the Pirelli tire contingency, and the prize in Unlimited is really good. It's two new slicks, which are uh, a very valuable prize. So um, if I can run the entire season uh, spending less than $3,000, that's my goal, and I'm keeping track of expenses, and I may share them later on in another video. So recap point two, uh, preparation for the event. Uh, like I said, I didn't need any modifications or anything to run Unlimited, but I did need a new transmission. Uh, you can see the old CD009 uh, behind me. I didn't make the decision to run till recently. I found a CD009 in a local auto wreckers, went down and picked it up, and I took it to Levine Motorsports uh, the Saturday before the event. I wasn't in the shop until about 8 p.m., but the brothers, Eric and Mark, changed the, uh, the transmission really quick. Pulled into the shop at about 8.08, and I was out before 10.30 on Saturday night. I packed up, loaded up, drove to the track, and it was nice to be right at the, early, right at the track early in the morning. So uh, to prepare myself physically, there wasn't much opportunity. I haven't really driven the car in eight months at all. And even in 2016, I was only involved in like three really short track days. So the fear of ring rust was uh, definitely there. To get ready, I went over all the old uh, Ontario Time Attack data. I went over uh, a bunch of YouTube videos. I decided to make three or four changes for the event. I decided to make sure I was using second gear in turns 3, 4, 11, and 13. that I would be putting two wheels off in the chicane in turn one. Uh, I decided I would be going absolutely flat out without lifting the throttle through turn 12. I wanted to make sure that I didn't break too late for turn eight. I wanted to make sure that uh, if you had the cheat, it was better to be a little bit early than too late. And there's a raccoon climbing a tree. So the event itself, uh, we got there early in the morning, we got unloaded right away, but there was a lot to do with the car still since it hadn't been run in eight months. We had to uh, make sure the splitter was on properly, we had to set up all of the uh, GPS and the cameras and stuff like that, and we had to get it through the tech line get everything checked out. So we ended up missing the first session. Second session was the first time I made it out, but I was stuck behind a uh, slower car for much of the session.
little bit for one lap and I set a 135.0 which is pretty quick it's um, right up there with my fastest times I've been able to run so far uh, and it was done so easily that I was confident that we'd be able to save a bunch more time. Uh, the second session I had checked the oil and I'd forgotten to put the dipstick in firmly enough so very quickly onto the track uh, oil started coming out of the dipstick hole and onto the headers and creating a huge cloud of smoke uh, so I was quickly black flagged and that session was a write-off. <laughs> I believe I missed the next session as well, cleaning the oil up. So we decided to put on the Pirelli DS Slicks. I spoke to Richard Bokey from Steelcase Tires and Mags, and he advised me to go with about 21 to 23 PSI cold. And since the car is a bit front heavy, I went with um, 22 PSI on the front and 23 PSI on the rear. And uh, I tried to go for a shakedown session just to see what would happen, because so far I'd only really done one lap. And very quickly out on the track, I'd run out of fuel. And once again, that comes down to me being cheap, uh, trying to run uh, as little gas as possible because the MS-109 is about $6 a liter. And uh, yep, I ran out of gas and that was a write-off for the whole session. tried to refuel and get back out but uh, a yellow flag came up because someone had gone off the track and the entire session was closed so sorry last one no i uh, had qualified for the finals but had only really done one lap and no laps on the ds slicks so i got lucky in that unlimited rear wheel drive wasn't really competitive at the event there are several people uh, around in Canada and around Ontario that are you know more than capable of beating my fastest lap times um, but it just so happened that none of them were really ready for the event and um, hadn't entered. Um, the only other competition came from Nikki Bice and her um, supercharged Miata but it was having problems making boost and without boost it isn't really much of a match for my car so I knew that I would really be free to run by myself and that meant uh, as long as the only thing I had to do to collect the uh, Pirelli tire contingency was to finish uh, but at the same time I didn't really want to embarrass myself. Even given that there wasn't a lot of immediate competition I didn't want to embarrass myself I wanted to set a representative time something that I could be proud of. Uh, since I didn't have any real uh, immediate competition I just kind of invented some for myself. I wanted to be the fastest rear wheel drive car. I wanted to be about one or two seconds clear of the super street class and I wanted to be three or four seconds clear of the street class. And um, those are just personal goals and little personal milestones. Uh, given that uh, I call I call it, I was uh, fresh off the couch, really unprepared, eight month layoff and no practice. I was really happy with the final time of 131.616. It was good for first an unlimited rear wheel drive and it was a pretty competitive time. It was uh, third fastest overall. It was the fourth fastest time ever set on the circuit. I believe the record was set in 2015 by Vince Stratti in 129.6, could have never reached that goal the car just isn't fast enough that's the theme of the season the car isn't really capable of being the pace of the field but capable of being somewhat competitive putting up reasonable times so yep that's the theme of the season just go out have fun and um, spend as little money as possible but still be competitive in the unlimited field uh, hopefully i can pick up one more tire contingency if i do that would match my entire budget for the season so it would be basically be a break even which in Time Attack would be uh, insane. The next round is CSCS Time Attack at Toronto Motorsports Park on June 25th. I'm already signed up in unlimited rear wheel drive, so I'll be there. So that wraps up the recap. I'm gonna get the uh, car off the trailer, get it loaded up, checked over in the garage, and ready for the next round of the CSCS Time Attack Championship. <laughs>
Car number 80, Michael Gardner. All right, Nikki, Mike. Shake it up, spray it up. You know what to do. Congratulations, bud. Give it up for your limited real wheel drive champions.